Another week, another edition of The Bachelor Goat. <laughs> greatest of all time. And the season that Chris Harrison is taking us through this time is Ben Higgins, who I like to call the Goldilocks of Bachelor Nation. Because his season was not too cold, not too hot, this one's just right. Because it has pretty much all the traditional elements you'd expect from a season of The Bachelor. Romance, drama, a proposal at the end, a cast chock full of familiar faces, and a lead that doesn't make you want to rip your hair out. Excuse me? I literally Excuse just- Excuse you what? So let's not waste any time. I don't have three hours to break this thing down like Chris Harrison does, and besides, I've got some boiling water in the other room and I want to get to that. So, Ben Higgins you might remember from last week's edition of The Bachelor Greatest Seasons Ever with Caitlin Bristow. And if you haven't checked it out, I did a 10 minute recap of that season as well, where Ben Higgins got to the top three and became popular enough to land the role of the next lead. So in 2016, Ben started his journey and the whole thing about his season was Ben feeling like he couldn't be loved. If I were at the end of this to fall in love and not be loved back, I feel like I would just have legitimized one of my biggest concerns, the fear of being unlovable. So this cast of women is here to change that, and we are really getting into more familiar faces if you've been following the franchise in the past few years. Tiara, Izzy, Jamie, Leah, Lauren, and Amber are all faces you might not recognize, but were from this season, and also on Bachelor in Paradise Season 3. Amber was actually also on Season 2 because she's a returning face from the previous season of The Bachelor with Chris Souls. And she's not the only returning woman from this season, as Becca Tilly, the runner-up from Chris Soul's season, also made it onto the show. Now, if you have been following this franchise, you'll definitely remember Lace. I want to be clear, like, the issue was that I didn't make eye contact during the rose ceremony with you. You didn't look at me once. Who got engaged at the end of Bachelor in Paradise Season 3. There's Jen Saviano, who was also on that season, and made it all the way to the end of the show with Nick Vial, and also appeared in the most recent edition of Paradise, where she vied for Chris Bukowski's love opposite Katie. There's Shoshana, who was on the third and fifth seasons of Paradise, Kayla, again, third season of Paradise, Jubilee, who was on the third and fifth seasons, the twins Emily and Haley Ferguson, who were on the third, fourth, and Haley was also on the most recent season of Bachelor in Paradise, where she went after the infamous John Paul Jones and was called a pigeon. You're the pigeon. Yeah. I'm a seagull. Oh, okay. And of course, Amanda, who got engaged at the end of season three of Paradise to Pizza Guy. Unfortunately, she was also on season four of Paradise because pizza gets real old when you have it every night of the week. But for this season, the major players are going to be Lauren, Kayla, Amanda, Olivia, and Jojo. Yes, there are other women who make a splash this season, but we're just going to be focusing on these five and skipping over some of the others, like the twins here, which was really an obvious gimmick thrown in by producers, and even they have said in a recent Instagram post that they originally weren't there for the right reasons. I am shocked. Shocked. Well, not that shocked. So it's night one, and it wouldn't be The Bachelor without a few costume gimmicks like Jojo wearing a unicorn mask, this lady who dressed up as a literal rose, and of course, this. Oh. Come on, little man. Ladies and gentlemen, the world famous Lil Sebastian. What? Yes! No. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> I never oh thought god. I'd get to meet him! Well done, Leslie! Well done! <laughs> but the most important element for night one is Hi. Olivia. I'm Olivia. Why? Because on night one, it's Olivia that sets off one of the major storylines of the season. And it's a story that resonates through the Bachelor franchise to this day. Because after Olivia opens up to Ben about leaving her job as a news anchor to be on the show and to find love with him, Ben decides to give Olivia the first impression rose. And from here, all eyes are on Olivia. She receives rose after rose. She pulls Ben aside a lot. Could I borrow Ben for of just course. a second? What a selfish bitch. And the other women in the house turn on her. Add to that a Las Vegas group date in week four where Olivia does this. And you've got yourself the perfectly crafted bachelor villain. But here's the tea. Yes, Olivia did say some things. So now I'm done. Now everybody have at it. But there's a lot that was influenced for Olivia. For example, that jumping out of the cake Allegedly, that was producer influence. All that interrupting of people and grabbing Ben, also producer influence, with Olivia saying after the show, quote, 
At the time, my producer would be like, hey, Ben asked us to ask you if you'll grab him first. So I'd be like, oh yeah, sure, whatever, fine. In hindsight, he probably never cared or even asked for me to grab him first. There was also a group date in Mexico City where all the women were put into pairs, and allegedly, they purposely paired Olivia with Ben to make the other women jealous. And yeah, not everything can always just be blamed on the edit, and Olivia has been vocal about that. And since the show, she's made amends with the women she's clashed with, and been incredibly open about her mental health struggles. But the amount of hate and vitriol that Olivia received after the airing of the show was so bad that Ben Higgins came on the program to apologize to her. So Olivia, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, I take responsibility for this, but I also no. just want to tell everybody how awesome you are. All right, anything you have to say, Chris? No? No? We're just going to move on? All right then. So eventually, Olivia gets dumped on a two-on-one and is left to live out the rest of her days on this island. And the rest of the season goes on as normal. We have fun group dates like this one with Kevin Hart and Ice Cube in a hot tub. Love Kevin Hart. Yeah. Everything about him. His humor, his comedy, his films. Comedy films mainly. Mainly, yeah. yeah. Other quote villains make the rounds. We're wearing the same thing. Can I tell you, you look way better because her boobs are too small. <laughs> but really, it's four main contenders that make their way to the forefront, and those women are Amanda, Kayla, Jojo, and Lauren, who end up being the top four of the season. Now, Amanda's story was really centered around her being a mom to two girls, and if Ben was ready to be a father. So Amanda actually making it to hometowns was really a big deal, as Ben was set to meet Amanda's kids. And Amanda starts seeing Ben as a potential father for her girls. After today, I feel like I can 100% see him coming into me and my kids' lives. I can see him being a great dad to my kids, being a great husband. We almost got him. He then dumps her at the next rose ceremony, which leaves three women, Kayla, Lauren, and Jojo. And with Kayla, she really grabbed Ben's attention with her softness, sweetness, innocence, and... She's like a, like a sex panther. Uh, okay, and she's like a sex panther, apparently. But while Kayla was a contender, the love story of Ben's season turned to this. That he was not just falling in love with two women, he was in love with two women. And Kayla was the odd one out. So she's sent home before the final three row ceremony, and this season comes down to Lauren B. and Jojo. Now, when I was watching, my opinion on these two was this. Jojo was more interesting to watch, Lauren seemed more compatible with Ben, and Ben struggled with his feelings for both. But what you need to know is that there's always been this sort of rule that the Bachelor or Bachelorette can't say I love you to any of the contestants until the end of the show when they pick someone. They can say I'm falling for you or dance around the word as much as they want, and contestants are encouraged to say it at any time, but as for the lead, that's a no-no. Which is why it's such a shock for Jojo when she tells Ben she loves him, and Ben says this. Jojo, I love you too. What? I do. Are you out of favor? Which is a huge moment for Jojo. Something she thinks is so special. Ben broke the rules just to tell her he loves her. If only she knew that this also happened. I've known I'm in love with you for a while as well. And when Jojo finds out from Ben that he said I love you to Lauren as well, she suddenly doesn't feel so special anymore. And you love her too. Yes. In all the history of the human race, no couple having a late night chat in a bathroom stall has ever turned out well. And for Jojo, that rings true. As the first one to come out of the, uh, oh, helicopter, wow, they really upped the final row ceremony budget this time, the first one out of the helicopter and the one getting dumped is Jojo. And for Ben, though he says he's fallen for Jojo, he's fallen more for Lauren. And while Jojo seems heartbroken now, don't worry. She becomes the next Bachelorette, and her love story is going to be highlighted next week. As for Lauren, her helicopter exit is much happier, as Ben proposes, and the two are engaged. Will you marry me? <laughs> yes! And they both lived happily ever after. For about a year. The two broke up in May 2017. Lauren is now married to country music singer Chris Lane, and Ben is now engaged to Yuki, who he met on Bachelor Winter Games. No, no, I'm just kidding. He met Jessica here, and the two are now engaged. But I miss Yuki. I do. 
And so, there you have it. Ben Higgins season, and I know a lot had to be rushed over, like pretty much all of Jubilee, which is a shame, but ultimately, if you're interested in a pretty standard season of The Bachelor, with cast members still involved in the Bachelor world and shows to this day, this season could be the one for you. So thanks for watching this recap of Ben's season. I hope you enjoyed it, and be sure to like and subscribe if you did. Until next time, Bachelor Fan Take, out. How can you compete with twins? With a mini horse, that's how. <laughs>